So here I have a tool with lots of different sub tools. If I want to scale all of this based on one tool, so say I would like this to be a three millimeter screw, it's not currently, I don't know what it is, it's an arbitrary size. But if I resize that to three millimeters, I'd like everything else to scale relative to that. So we keep the proportions. So in order to do that, we use the Z plugin, and I'm just gonna dock this over here by grabbing this and putting it over to the side. We use the scale master. Before we do that, there's a couple of things to take care of. If I zoom in on this, I'll press F to frame this on the, in the viewport. And you can see here that dynamic subdivision is turned off. If I turn this on, you can see that the size of this seems to change. It seems to get smaller when I turn this on because it's actually smoothing it. But this is just a preview. The scale master doesn't recognize the dynamic subdivision when it's on. It effectively thinks of it as being off all the time. This is the true size of the object. This is just a preview of what it will be. So if I go over here and I set the scene scale, the first thing we're gonna say, it's gonna find some units for this and it's gonna say, this is 0 0.2 by 0 0.2 by 0 0.1. Which unit would you like to use? So obviously, obviously I want this to be three millimeters. So I'm gonna choose rather than millimeters 0 0.02, I'm gonna choose 0 0.02 centimeters, which would be closer to the size that I actually want. So I'm gonna choose that. You'll see that this has now changed to centimeters. If I change to millimeters and then say sliders to subtool size, this is now 0.2 millimeters. So this is updated to be as close as, as we can get. You'll see when I framed this, sorry, let me just frame that again. When I frame this with dynamic subdivision off, when I hit sliders to subtool size, this is the size. If I turn it on, and even though it appears small in the viewport, when I hit sliders to subtool size, nothing changes. So it's effectively ignoring that. So either scale with this off, if you, if you want to keep this object constantly with smoothing off, or if you do want smoothing on it, you'll have to use real subdivision. So we can divide that like this a couple of times. And you'll see now when we click on this, it's gonna give the true size of this object. So this is the true dimensions. So we have the option now to change this. If I just typed in a random number, three, and then hit tab, you'll see that it hasn't updated the other two. So we're gonna get something that's now three millimeters wide by 0.2 millimeters tall, Y being up, and 0 0.07 millimeters deep. So that's not what we want. So I'm gonna reset that by clicking this again. And this time I'm going to turn on the lock sliders to ratio button. So when I turn that on now and I tap in here and I press three and tab, you'll see that these update to say, oh, it's three millimeters wide, nearly three millimeters tall and one millimeter deep. If I was to hit resize subtool now, just this subtool would be resized. So that's not what I'm looking to do. I want to resize all of the subtools. So I need to turn this option on here and then say resize subtool. That's going to go through all of the subtools for me. So once it's resized all, it'll zoom you back to the place that we had. So I'm gonna press F to zoom back out again. And you can see that this now, if I hit sliders to subtool size, is still three by three by one. ZBrush is quite precise. If you export this, it will read as three in most other apps. Um, two one thousandth of a millimeter is not something to be too concerned about And um, when you're 3D printing or anything else like that. So this should hopefully be what you're looking for. From here now, you can just click on any other subtool and say sliders to subtool size, and that will tell you that this is 73 millimeters wide, 10 millimeters tall, and 111 millimeters deep. This one here will be 104 by 92 by 29. So 92, 104, 29 in this direction. So that will give you the size that you want. After this, if you want to export this, go to 3D Print Hub and update the size ratios. If you, I prefer to choose one that I know. So for example, I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to choose the screw that I just had. I'll update the size ratios. I know this is three by two, three by one millimeters. So I'll choose that. And then from here, we can just export to STL, making sure to choose whether we want visible, selected, or all of our sub tools. And um, we can choose to export them as separate files with PolyPaint or not, but we just hit the export button and then that's it. That will then come into any other 3D printing um, app or slicer and allow you to uh, print at the correct scale. Hope this tip helps and as usual, please leave your comments below or any suggestions for any other tutorials that you'd like to see. Thanks, bye.